Hello guys, welcome to STP Presents Tech View, another episode. Today uh, I'll discuss very, very, very important uh, things for system admin, like for like for system admin, actually the core responsibility is to uh, maintain the for infrastructure. Uh, it actually depends on um, like what actually you are doing on your organization. So uh, one organization can have multiple system admin. But if you want to work as the infrastructure system admin, and if you work in a senior level, you most of the time your responsibility should be to take care of the whole infrastructure. And under the infrastructure, so you have to build the infrastructure, you have to manage the infrastructure, and also uh, you have to monitor, and also you have to make sure uh, you have enough backup for, for your infrastructure. So you have to ensure the backup. So backup is a very Im important uh, role for a system admin, like infrastructure system admin. So today I'll show you guys uh, Beam Backup and Replication. So I'll show from the beginning, uh, like how, what's you need and what should be your uh, backup infrastructure. And uh, so design architecture, installation, configuration. So Beam Backup and Replication. So Beam, what Beam does, so beam backup, through the beam backup, you will be able to take backup your whole infrastructure, if it is physical or virtual or in your cloud. So everything you can do through um, beam backup. Not only that, there's another cool uh, part on beam backup is replication. So for the replication, you don't need to use another tools. So if I give an example, like if you want to have a DR side, like disaster recovery side, so what are you gonna do? From your VMO workload, you have to like send some copy to your DR side, and whenever your primary side is down, you will be able to power on the machine on your DR side, and your your um, application will be available within short time. So that's what the main thought for uh, DR side disaster recovery. So for the disaster recovery. What you have to do, you have to implement third-party tools, or maybe VMware has a tool called um, SRM, Site Recovery Manager. But if you use the Site Recovery, you have to have uh, replication, VMware replication also. So you have to uh, install like four four um, appliances, two appliances your primary side and two appliances your DR side. And not only that. So uh, the appliance, the application appliance in primary and DR, and uh, SRM in primary and DR. And through this, you have to configure that. Um, you, you have to configure your uh, disaster recovery. That means your disaster recovery model. But beam backup and replication will give you everything together. That's what beam call it, um, beam availability suite. And inside the availability suite, you can have beam one, that means, Beam one is completely monitoring system. So through the Beam one, you will be able to manage, um, estimate, future estimate, everything you can do. So let's get started, see what we can do. And again, this is a complete full video from the scratch. And if you, if you are new in my channel, please subscribe my channel and give a big thumbs up if you like it and also share with your friends. And don't forget to click the bell icon because um, it will help you to get my next video. And in this video, I'll show you just how to configure a Beam Backup, not the replication. Replication, I'll, I'll make a separate video. And also Beam 1, I'll make another separate video. So it will, total, it will be total three video. So let's get started. Uh, let me share my screen and I'll show you my infrastructure, actually what I plan. Uh, that's how you can plan to uh, share my screen and then I'm going to jump in here. So first I want to show you guys my infrastructure. So I have Active Directory. Um, I have activity in infrastructure. I have a uh, database, SQL Server database, all on infrastructure with four node. 
uh, if I can show you guys here, see your yeah, NY database. That means this is my dear side. Two node is running, SQL running, and um, database BA Virginia. Two node is running here. So total four node running on both side. And this is my allogen in, in uh, SQL Server allogen. So whenever we're going to install the Beam backup and replication, at that time we need a, a database. So we're going to use this allogen environment for our Beam backup database. So um, and for the based on the plan, I deployed total five five virtual machine in my VMware environment. So on my primary side, see here PR Beam backup. So primary side Beam backup. So I deployed um, three virtual machine. So the MST, which one is SLVPW, it's I just try to maintain um, the VM name or, or sub server name. I try to maintain standard. This is how all the organization maintain. So in your case, maybe the naming convention maybe should be different. Uh, it's up to you and also based on your organization. So um, this is my master server. This is the proxy, one of the proxy, or just one proxy and one gateway. But in your case, maybe if you have a big environment, maybe you, can, you need like three, four, five uh, proxy server to maintain. To if you like, if you um, if you have a, like two hundred machine or three hundred machine or maybe five hundred or maybe one thousand machine backup infrastructure. In that case, what do you have to do? So you. One machine concurrently can handle four jobs at a time. So if you run at the same time, say most of the time backup job is scheduled at night time. So say for example, 10 o'clock. So how many jobs you can run? Like you can have like 20 jobs. So you cannot you cannot run 20 jobs through just your master server. So it's better to distribute the workload. So in that case, you can use proxy server for to distribute the workload. And I have a gather server. What is a gather server? So gather server is a actually a data mover. It's a data mover. So whenever uh, you beam backup, take a backup. And uh, it, actually, if I show you my uh, structure, then that will be easy. So the, this is the VMO work on the like production workload, which is uh, this one. So my all maximum machine is here. So this is my VMware infrastructure, the production side. And um, so, and this is the, my production VMware infrastructure, VMware storage, basically. It can be Unity storage, it can be other storage, it doesn't matter. Uh, inside the VMware, this is my master um, Beam server. So, and this is my proxy server. This is my gateway server on in the primary side, right? And this is the disaster recovery site. And if you configure a beam backup and replication, beam backup and replication, if you configure beam backup and replication, in that case, um, you need this. But otherwise, if you have just in the storage uh, and one of the gateway server over there, that's fine. So why you need a storage if you don't configure um, a replication? So whenever you configure the replication, that means you are trying to do implement disaster recovery. That means your, your primary set is completely down and all of the application, whatever you configure for replication, all of the machines, all of the applications, you will like quickly you can power on from the DR side. So actually replication is a completely separate uh, topic. So I will discuss in my uh, another video. Uh, so today we're gonna just see, we're gonna we're gonna install and configure um, Beam backup. So through the backup system, so everything we're gonna install under the master server. And master server, we're gonna create the jobs. We're gonna add all the uh, proxy server, gateway server, uh, repository, storage repository. Like if you add any storage to your backup system, that means where the backups will go. Backup supposed to go some storage, right? So the storage called repository. So inside the storage system, you have to create some uh, share path. And when you add those share path on the Beam backup server, that's called a repository. So you have to add a repository. In our case, um, this is my lab environment. I don't have that much um, like highly configured storage system. Uh, 
so I have NAS storage. So I'm going to add the NAS. And through the NAS, I'll show actually how we can configure. So inside one of the job, you can configure retention policy. That means your data is savings to your storage, but for how long? How long you want to keep? So the standard 30 days, but it depends on your organization. You can save it for longer. And copy job. So copy job is means is, is a secondary copy. So whatever you are saving here uh, is coming through your gateway and here. And the copy job will go. Copies of will go your secondary location, like disaster recovery site, or maybe other site. It doesn't matter. So you just need to have a storage there. So the copy job will go there. And then uh, archive copy. So if you want like a uh, cold storage, if you want cold storage, the same copy, you want to keep it like for a long times, so one year, two year, five year, 10 year, 20 years. So you can just configure that one and you can add the storage, the cold storage. That's why I have storage here, storage here, but don't worry about it. Like it's not mean that you have to have it. If you think you need to have like this kind of infrastructure, in that case, you, you should have it. All right. And ghetto server actually what the ghetto server process. Ghetto server is nothing, it's just processing, helping your storage because Beam wasn't able to install uh, beam as an in inside the storage system. So beam has some limited, um, beam has some agreement with some limited company, like third party company. So say for example, data domain, or Dell EMC data domain. So Dell EMC data domain is compatible with the beam. So that's why you, you can do without this. So your, your uh, storage system will respond uh, the way it should be. But if it is any other storage system, so Beam will not be able to install the essence to process your data. So whenever you have backup, I'll discuss in depth when I start the configuration, why you need the gateway. So this is all, um, this is uh, the infrastructure. Now we're gonna see actually what you need. So server details, I have the complete note here, actually what's the server name, uh, IP address, so what should be the configuration. Actually, I don't have the 16 CPU, right now I have four and four. But in, in, in your professional environment, you should have like this. So this is what I like my all details. And also one thing don't forget because every time whenever you install anything, any application, you should have your, uh, the application related service account. So this is my Beam backup. So I, create, I have created a one uh, service account named Beam SRV service account inside my domain controller. So he, he, this is the like screenshot of it. Backup and repository. So this is the backup repository name I have created inside my share uh, location, which is my NAS storage. And this is the share path. So whenever we're gonna start configuration, we need all those paths. So I'll, I'll, I just need to copy, that's it. Um, backup proxy. So all these are proxy information here, all the proxy information here and deployment. So now it's deployment. Before your deployment, you should, you, you have some prerequisites. Like, like uh, I showed you guys here, I have uh, five server, five five virtual machine I deployed. So three I deployed in primary side and two I deployed in uh, uh, dear side. So, and also all the servers, after I deployed, I, I configured everything, what I configured. So this is the very basic for you, but like, setting up a VM virtual machine, right? So you have to make sure uh, time zone, you may configure the time zone and your IP address, static IP address and remote desktop, because if you can configure remote desktop, then that means you can, you'll be able to um, uh, RDP on it the way I do right now. And may, Windows file, Defender file, turn off. Actually, this is, it shouldn't be turned off if you, ha if you have a GPU policy. Organizational GP policy, but right now this is my lab environment. I didn't apply the, the GP policy yet for the file. That's why I just simply turn off. But turn off is not a good idea. Again, turn off is not a good idea. But for now, I have to turn off because I need to have some um, like communication with my storage and my. And if I turn off the uh, 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 firewall, it's gonna block a lot of things. So that's why I just turn off temporarily. And also you have to change your computer name and uh, change out like a specific whatever that, because the virtual machine name. So whenever you create a virtual machine, oh, sorry. Um, 
when you create a virtual machine here, so this is the inventory name, this is not the server name. Actual server name is here, DNS name, right? So you have to make sure your all the machines is ready. You have to add it with the domain. You have to add all your server with the domain. So this is how you have to add. If you click on the computer name, change. So you have to provide the name, you have to maybe reboot and then come back and you have to provide the domain name that we authenticate with your uh, uh, administrative account and make sure your machine is added with the domain. So all the machine you have to add with the domain. And also another thing, make sure, another thing also you have to make sure you have, um, what do you have? Another thing you have to make sure is up to date. Up to date means you have to apply the patch the latest patch. So if you go to update the security and say check updates and apply the updates. So now everything is up to date. If I see, see the view update history, see uh, today is October uh, 21. So October patch already released last week. So it's already installed here. So everything is up to date. So make sure all of your virtual machine, whatever you have planned, install everything. So mine is everything is ready. Whenever you are also, also, you have to download Beam Backup software, download copy. I, I, it can be ISO file and SQL Server. Uh, okay, and not only copy, copy and license it. Will. License. So SQL Server instance for Beam database. So you have to make sure you have, you have ready database. Then you start the installation. So this is the installation process. So before you install it, you have to download it, right? So you have to log into your account, so if I can show you here, I just log in. Uh, you can search like this, Beam 11, no, not Community Edition actually, you can say Beam uh, 11 download. So, okay, anyway, download. So it will take you to the Beam product download uh, page and this one, or maybe this one. So you have to sign in, log in, and then you have to go to the download, then you have to select the product. This is the comparison of community. Without license, you can do the community edition, community edition but community edition has some uh, limitations. So maybe you cannot practice the complete feature, enterprise level feature. So if you want to get into enterprise level of, uh, feature, then you have to uh, download the trial version and trial key. So trial key, actually how you get it. So I logged in here, you see here, contact at sidebd.online.com. I just, uh, purchase one email address from uh, one of the company. So I just, I spend $1 a month. I can um, cancel it anytime. It's just $1 a month uh, from from her. Let's see. Uh, it's called one. Actually, I know this one, hosting provider. So I, I purchase email address from them. And I, I, I have to pay $1 every month. So this is called professional because a lot of those uh, vendor side, they don't accept your personal email address. So if it is for personal email address means if it is under Gmail, Yahoo, Rocketmail or whatever, they thought this is it, your personal. So you have to do something else. And if you like, if you and also if you work for some company and company email address, shouldn't be used with your like lab work, your personal use. So in that case, you should have another email address like me. So, and then you can restore this. When you restore this, you can come here, license agreement and product is here. So this is the product subscription product. So you can download, actually this one, download Beam Backup and Application. This is Beam Availability Suite. And Beam Backup and Application, this is 9.5, it's 11 version. And this is Beam 1, which is like for monitoring. You can download this or you can download directly from here. You can download the whole set together. It's up to you. And trial version, this trial version license, you can say um, download. I will Beam available suite download. So it will download for, um, so license for how many instance? 1,000 instance. You can do the practice with 1,000 instance. You can back up. Instance means, uh, say one virtual machine, two virtual machine, those are instance. So um, I just downloaded this one today and it gives me 
the expiration date November 20. That means today is October 21st. So it gives me 30 days trial version license. And let's go start it. Um, I have everything ready. Let's show you here. Um, if I go my, this is my master server. I plan to install in this machine and everything up to date here. And also I have, um, I have the Beam license here, Beam software here. Just only one thing I need, whenever I have everything ready and just I'm trying to install now. So before I install anything, all the time, just remember, you have to take a snapshot of your all virtual machine. Why you need to take a snapshot? Because if during the installation time, if you face any issues or like you screwed up with something, like you would think, okay, maybe this can be the solution. This can be the solution. You did a lot of stuff in this machine on the other machine. So uh, and then maybe, maybe after some test, maybe you, you'll be confused actually what are you supposed to do. And you spend a lot of time to dip, depart these two machine, uh, five machines. And also you spend a lot of time to update, apply the paths and all other configuration. So if you want to save you time, you should take a snapshot, not only for your lab environment and your entire life on your production environment, on your like on job place, all the time, whatever you made any change on your BM environment, you should take a snapshot. So that's what you're gonna do. So I'm going to take a snapshot right now for all of my five uh, machine. Oh, so this is database. I'm not focusing on the database right now. The beam backup, right? So this is my three machine on my primary side. This is my DR side. And I'm going to take a, a snapshot. Snapshot is pretty easy. Take a snapshot and make sure you, you uncheck this one. And please mention here uh, before beam installation, before beam installation. But uh, you can have like in details, whatever you want, it's up to you. It doesn't matter if you don't put anything here, it still is gonna work. So I have one. And then the second one I'm going to create, see how it's giving. See how it's already done within a second, within a second. Okay, within two, three seconds. And I'm going to do another one, take snapshot. And I'll check this one. Okay. See, boom, it's done. So it started out 9, 10, 36, 9, 10, 38. It takes two seconds only. So two seconds will save you a lot of time, believe me. Okay. Okay. It's also done now. Dear side. Actually, I don't have any plan to work on DR side. It's still, uh, if I can take a sniffer, it's not gonna hurt me. And also it's not gonna uh, consume my time too much. So I can take a snapshot. So I will be in safe side. Just click. Okay. So I have now a snapshot for all five machines. Now we can, I can start the installation. So now the actual installation is start. Okay, all right. So I have everything, right? So I'm going to double click on Beam Backup and Application. This is the ISO file, if you look at here. It's 9.50 gigabyte. It's a huge file. So you can right click on it all the time. You can say mount or yeah, you can say mount. So it's gonna be open, open. It's gonna open as a, uh, window like this and right click the setup setup file right click okay select first select select and then right click run as administrator and click yes but i want to show you one thing right now this one will take me to this one will take me to here right whenever you start say uh, being back up with application installation whenever you, you click here it's it was looking for some prerequisites like the server has something or, or like it's, it will look for Microsoft Visual C++ this. So I already installed this through this. Uh, I ran it before I start the recording the video. 
and it take it, it's already installed. It didn't take time well, because I, I just want to save time. That's why I installed it previously before I start the video. But I want to show you how it's gonna be look like. So I have a software here. If you open it like this, you're gonna see it. You're gonna see it in a short time. So run as administrator. I'm not installing in this machine. I'm just I just want to show you guys actually what it's looking for. That's why I just open here. This is not this is my gateway machine. I'm not going to install here. Just I want to show you actually what is going to show. So whenever you attempt to install here, I'll cancel the installation. What is this? Please install Microsoft Visual C. This. So whenever you hit OK, it's going to install here. But I'm not going to install here. I'm going to cancel. So that's what it shows here too. But right now it's not going to show me again because it's already installed, and I set the time. It will take a little bit time, but you have to wait. I don't have any options to uh, escalate this. So you have to wait, there's no choice. Uh, it depends on actually your machine performance. But it shouldn't be take that long. So I'm not sure how why it's taking too long. I'm going to pause the video for a little bit. All right, <clears throat> all right. So I got it right. Uh, I got this one. So you have to accept both. Click next, and then license for Beam Backup and Application. So if you don't have license, you can just go to next, and if you hit next without uh, providing the license. That means you're, you are installing community edition and community edition has some limitation, which I chose here previously. Uh, this is the difference between the product uh, community edition and your beam backup application enterprise edition. So some, some uh, features is not available on community edition and some of them is partial. So that's why I recommend you guys like, uh, and also you cannot practice beam one with uh, your community edition. So that's why you should have, you should have actually uh, like your personal email address, like the way I created, and then register with this email, your, your in like business email address, and then download the license. All right, so here. Now uh, I have a license, right? So I'm going to click browse, and I know where it is, it's on my download folder and just open it. So all the software license, everything I copied to my uh, Beam Backup server locally. And click next. So it will verify my license. All right. So it's already verified. Click next, oh, oh, sorry. Actually, everything is going on my C drive. If you want to change this one from your C drive to the other drive, you can do that. Uh, I should do it, but I click already next. And this is not re uh, responding because it's loading something. That's why, don't worry about it. And maybe I can go back and change this one, but uh, I should do it before.
All right. So now it's checked. It's checked and says this Microsoft System CLR SQL Server 2014. It's looking for 2014. And Microsoft Report Viewer, this, 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 blah, blah, blah. So it's failed. So we didn't install any SQL here. So it's gonna, for its compatibility, it will install some um, like features here. Uh, we don't mind because we don't gonna use Actilio 14. We're gonna connect it anyway to um, our uh, Allison environment. So our, our Allison database is 2019 and Windows is 2019. Um, and also it's looking for Microsoft.NET dotnet framework so i'm going to in click install it's going to install automatically and it will take time in the meantime i'm just pausing the video and i'll like pause back again um so whenever it's done it's, it will take just a little bit time all right so it's checked everything and it's passed so i can go now next all the required um Component installed already. Click next. And it shows me all the configuration what so far I'm done. And it shows all the ports number. Uh, in some case, you need the port, so maybe you can have uh, some notes with all the ports, like the catalog service port, uh, the service service port, uh, the secure connection port. Why you need all those? Uh, because uh, if you apply to the any GPU policy, in that case, you need all those ports to be open from your uh, uh, GPU firewall policy. Uh, and also you can search in Google, you can find from the, or, or BIM uh, portal from there, you can get it all the ports. You, need, you don't need to be worried about it. Uh, and in here, it says, um, I'm, I'm not sure what it says. Okay, catalog is going E. Install folder actually is go C. Uh, it's supposed to be E. Uh, yeah. Next time when when you install, make sure you put it in a different type. And let's let me specify different settings. Click next. All right. Um, local system and the following user account, service account. So I'm gonna use my service account Beam SRV. And if he's, if it is not showing here, the reason it's showing automatically here because I logged in all these machines. I used when I logged in there. I when I logged in there, I used see here uh, the IP address, the username, and like this is my service account. So I logged in this machine as a service account. That's why I have this one. But if you logged in in your um, this machine with your A account or something or your administrative account or your uh, whatever, so it's gonna show. Whatever the Windows login is going to show that user here. And if you want to change to your service account, then you can go browse and you can search. Go browse like this and search your uh, service account Beam SRV. When you want to search this, if you log in Windows machine with your personal account, in that time you need to search. But I log in as a service account, so that's why I don't need to search it. It automatically shows there. But if you don't log in with your uh, like service account, you log in your, your personal account, your administrative account. In that time, you have you need to do like this check. But no, uh, beam, beam, it's beam SRV, right? B E E A M S R V. Okay, I'm sure, sure, maybe I didn't. Okay, I just, I'm just going to copy. So you have to search like exactly what you have. So search it. Uh, oh, sorry. This object is not showing. Actually, not object, location. Location is not, it, it, it has to be point here, syslab. Now it's, it's showing, right? You have to say, okay. And then provide the password. Dollar sign. Sorry, it's like whatever. Whatever your password, you're going to put it here, okay? And now you just need to click next. So if I show you from my, see the, from my documents, what I'm exactly I have all this uh, screenshot here, exactly what I'm what I did. So I got this right. I have this, I have this, this pass, and then this. Make sure you check mark on here and click next. 
and verify the RSS lab account, like your service account, and then connect the SQL. Actually, I don't know what happened. Uh, connect with you. Okay, your SQL, right? All right, uh, let's see. So I have a SQL server here, and uh, this is my always an environment. See here, how many nodes I have? I have total four node, right? Four, actually four, four node with four instance. And this is my primary instance, primary node and primary instance. And right now primary instance is act acting as a, see here, SQL always on, availability group is a primary right now. So this is secondary, this is secondary, this is secondary, and this is the primary, and primary is this one, right? So, and this is my, um, Ability group listener. Uh, this is the list listener group. So every time if I want to host any database for any application, I have to connect this environment, this database environment, I have to connect with the listener. So what is the listener uh, uh, listener name? SQL AOAG. That means always on availability group a hyphen LST01. So that's what I have to type in here. Okay. Uh, install new SQL instance. We are not going to do that, right? And uh, use existing SQL instance. So it says provide the instance name and what should be that? What should be that? Um, so usually, what we do if we have a standalone SQL instance, in that time you have to provide the SQL Server uh, Windows machine name and slash instance name or if it is a default instance, you just provide the SQL Server uh, Windows machine name. That's enough, right? That's all, or you can provide the IP address of the server anyway. That's what you can do here. That's how you can connect it. But in our case, it's different because we are going to host our Beam Backup database to our always on environment. And always environment always connect to the listener. So we just need to provide the listener here. So what is the listener? If I show you on my documents, see here, the listener name. So you just need to provide the listener name. And make sure you provide the right listener. So our listener is SQL, right? Always on every group hyphen LST01. Most probably this, right? And make sure SQL always on every group hyphen LST01. And Beam Backup and Application Database, Beam Backup. So if you want, you can change you can change it or you can leave the default one. And how are you gonna connect? Through SQL Server Authentication using uh, SQL Server Authentication. So whenever we install the SQL Server Authentication, so you have to make sure you know all the information. You, have, you also need to know the SQL Server Authentication. You can, you can connect through Windows Authentication Credentials. So in, that means, that means uh, if you log in this box as a Beam server service account, so this Beam service account should have access on the SQL server. That means where? Here. If if you can add here SQL server security under the security um, login in here. In somewhere you can add with the group, your like Beam, Beam service account, you can add with the group or directly even add the service account in here. So then it will be able to communicate through your Windows, Windows notification. But we didn't add it yet. So we can, now we can use either one. So now we are using what? Uh, we are using SQL authentication, right? SQL authentication. So we know the SQL authentication username by default is SA, SA with, and uh, the password, you know your password, right? All right, and click next. It will take a little bit of time because it now it's trying to communicate with our Allison database environment and it's trying to create a database inside that. So within short time, we're gonna see here. Now, if you can look at here database, Right now I have no database here, like uh, I have just two test database here. So within short time, we're gonna see here, uh, Beam Backup database. If if this one will able to uh, successfully, okay. Look like it's already found that um, 
uh, from the SQL Server. So just so I get this window. Click next. E drive, everything is going E drive, instant recovery. Okay. Because oh, another thing I forget to disclose, which is each and every machine I have to drive. If you can look at here, make sure you should have to uh, like maximum time, but like by default, we all, all the time we just have only one drive, which is C drive. But whenever you have a plan uh, for your BIM backup environment, in that case, you should have two. All right. Um, MST installation phase. Uh, I'm going to minimize actually. Okay. All right. So ready to install. Now it's, it's found everything. Now it's ready to install. Check for update once the product is installed and periodically. So, and everything here, you see, I have everything captured here. Okay. All right. So, in here, what do you have to do? Check for updates once the product is installed. And so if you check mark on it, it's gonna check everything um, and it's gonna look for the updates. But I'm not going to check it right now. I'm check it and install. So it's now installing the Beam Backup Catalog and everything. So we have to wait a little bit until, it, until it's, it's finished. So it looks like it's progressing. Uh, it's taking a long time. It's already been like uh, more than 30 minutes. Still is installing. So I'm going to pause it again and I'll be back when it's done. All right, so the installation succeed. Installation completed. So now we can click finish. All right, so as you can see here, Beam Backup and Application Console. So console is here. Uh, the second step is uh, Beam Backup Enterprise Manager. So what is the Enterprise Manager? Enterprise Manager is uh, nothing, it's just a web access. Like through the web console, that means through the browser, you can configure a job, you can edit an existing job, and also you can assign users, like for example, uh, <clears throat> If you have a, D, a database uh, DBA group, so you can maybe assign them just for uh, and give them a role to just restore uh, their backup. So they can log in through the browser and also they will be able to restore their uh, database backup or something like that. So that's why we need enterprise manager. So we'll do it later. Uh, right now we want to see actually what inside of being backup and application console and we're gonna um, do some configuration and also we, we're gonna configure some jobs and we'll run it, let's see. So now you can close it. So open. All right, so now um, it's gonna use the beam, uh, it's gonna use the Windows credentials. And I logged in this, as a, um, I logged in this server as a service account, right? So, and it's using Windows application. But if I log in here, if I log in this machine uh, with my uh, administrative account, in that case, it's gonna show my administrative account. But if my administrative account doesn't have any permissions, because I installed this beam backup through, um, uh, with service account, but I logged in this machine with my A account, and that times this user will not be able, like my A account will not be able to log in this console. So now is is not not a problem because I logged in this machine as a service account. So just connect it.
Or is opening hand. Also, I want to check the uh, Active Directory. Actually, uh, to just provide some users access. And also, I uh, want to create a group. All right, so accounts, service accounts. So we have a service account and let me create a service account. Let's say um, computer, uh, create a group, group here. You can say service account group, service account group. Okay, so all the service account we're gonna add with this group. So that's how we don't need to individually assign a service account. And the Active Directory, like for the BIM, BIM login credential, and also, um, well, just give me a second, let me add them. Um, add to the group. So what's the group name? Is service count group. All right, so now SQL admin is a part of service account group, Bcenter admin. I'm going to add Bcenter admin. Actually, I, okay, you can do that. Account group. Okay, it's a part of now service account group. And beam service account. So I want to make this beam service account group with the, uh, I'm sorry, this is service account. So this service account, I, I want to make the part of this service account group. So right click on the accounts and then add a group. Service account group, right? So check it, okay. So now I don't need to individually assign. So this is the group. If I assign this group, that means all three will have access. Now, I have some user. So let me see. Mm, system admin, admin safe. Actually, I want to see properties. So ADM S Mojumdar. ADM S Mojumdar is my user account. And I don't know my password, so let's reset the password and then. Okay, I just reset my password and I want to show you the difference actually. And also we have some other group, right? Uh, I believe we have a group here, groups. We have a SQL group, we have a recent admin group, right? We have different, different group. And also uh, we have one group created under the service account. Okay, now let's do one thing. This service account group, actually, this is the user accounts uh, OU container. So we move it to the groups. So that's how we can easily. Okay. So I want to show you one difference, like this is, okay, it's just giving me alert. My license will be expired. It's fine. So this is, Upgrade mount server record, AJ apply. So this server will be used as a mount server because I'm, I'm mounting everything. I'm mounting everything to this master server. So master server will be the mount server, main server.
Okay. So all components have been upgraded. We'll finish. So now everything is here. And plus, if you click here, you're gonna see only inventory and backup infrastructure has a check mark. That's why I'm able to see here. But on the history, has a check mark. That's why I'm able to see the history. So these three things I'm able to see. The reason is it three options has a check mark. How I get it? Here. If you go here, you move the mouse and click here. And if you want to see everything on, on the list, just check mark. Just click, just click. So you're gonna see everything here. Backup infrastructure, storage, tab, files. Stream. Okay. All right. So before we jump into the configuration, like uh, the job configuration or our repository, which is data store configuration, uh, I want to show you guys actually some authentication. Uh, so if you go this uh, three lines, if you click here, you're going to see here manage credential, manage cloud credential, manage password. If you want to change the password, uh, general option, so you can check each and every options. So for example, um, the audit backup is going this location. If you want to change, you can change it. Uh, uh, email settings, like enable email notification, SMTP server from to, and it will send uh, the total, whatever the job and like, all the activities, it will send the email whatever the email address you're gonna provide here. So from means whatever, you can say, um, this from address is, if you don't have this address exist, doesn't matter, you can put it anything. You can say, uh, we monitor or notification, Beam notification at slab.com but this email is not exist actually but it doesn't matter because you're going to show the from but the main thing is you have to have a smtp server you have to have a smtp server you have to provide the smtp server information here and then two two should be where you want the notification all kind of notification. So it can be your uh, email address or maybe it can be DL, distributed list. That means group of emails under one distribution list. So you can provide the distribution list address. Here. That's it, and you can test it. So I'm not going to hit apply or okay, but you, you, whenever you want to configure, you can do apply and open. So this is one thing I just shows and manage credential is like the root password if you want to edit or change. You can change it and manage cloud credential, manage password, add. You can create some encryption password here. So you don't need it actually. User role. So right now, user group, administrator group by default is being backup and administrator. You can add more. So you can, let's say, beam operation or Beam backup administrator. So, for example, uh, my ADM as Check. So now I just added myself, my administrative account. So I, I'm a Beam backup administrator. But if you want to change my role to something else, say, uh, um, being back a B word. So I'll be, I, I'll be, whenever I log in through my A account on the, okay, let's actually delete this one, remove it. I want to see, show you something else. So add SQL admin group. SQL admin. Okay, actually do what, you know what? Do uh, other, other groups say, SQL. I don't actually know what the actual does not exist. 
let's check what kind of groups we have. Okay, it's SQL group, right? How many members? So all those members, if I want to give them, all those members, if I want to give them permissions to, actually I want to remove myself from here too. My admin account is here. Okay, all these users, if I want to give them access to beam backup, what I can, what, what should I do? I just need to add this group on the SQL. Okay, so let, let's do it. So you can see SQL group, right? SQL group. Okay, let's see actually what's the group name. Why I'm not getting this one? All right, now I found it. So the all SQL group, or whoever is the member of SQL group, they will have access as a operator. Backup operator or tap operator or backup viewer. So it depends on you if you add them as an operator. So whenever they log into any this machine with their credential, they will be able to log in here. But I will not be able to because I didn't add myself yet. I'll, I'm going to show you the difference and later on I will add myself. So th this is how you can add people here. And <clears throat> license is very important. One thing is which is license. So now my license is buried with um, elevation enterprise class license, but uh, package is sweet package instance, uh, 1000 instance expiration date is. 1120, which is 30 day left. So you can see here your license. And also if you want to um, install a license, you can add like from here. Configuration backup, this is another important thing. You have to configure the backup. So I'm, I'm going to, I, I'll configure it later on because I don't have any, um, repository now, I have the default one, I don't wanna use it. So before I do all the kind of configuration, I want to see the difference, show you the difference, the way I logged in. So every time when I come here and I like try to log in, it's gonna take Windows authentication. That means whatever the user I logged in here, Windows machine, it's gonna take here. So this machine I logged in as a, so let's, let's log in this machine with my account. my administrative account, okay? So I'm going to sign out from here. Sign out. So instead of Vim serve, uh, that means service account, I'm going to ADM as Mojimra. I'm going to log in this machine as mine. I just changed my username and password actually same, both are same, that's why I don't need to change actually. So now I'm going to log in again here as, as you can see here, admin, site Mojumdar. So I'm logging as my, my administrative account. All right. So I just logged in and in the background, there is some other services loading. Uh, you have to wait because Beam service needs to be start, but you see, you have to wait for that. All the service is not up and running. All right, I think I can try now. Uh, so double click on it. What it shows? ADMs as much in the right. If I say connect, it will give me an error. Just watch. It will give me an error because my username is not assigned. Oh, 
All right. Somehow is the sign. How? Maybe I'm the part of any group. Let's see actually. How I'm able to log in there. Okay. It's not bad, but here. Uh, Here's the role. So SQL group, right? Let's see on the SQL group. Oh, I'm not here. Strange. But it shouldn't be. I have to, <clears throat> until I assign myself, until I assign myself here, because I log in this machine with my A account. Admin side, but admin side is not any group member. Being backup administrator, store operator, So it needs to be have access on there. Okay. Anyway, uh, it shouldn't be like uh, you have to assign uh, because I believe I didn't hit okay, uh, apply and okay. So that's why maybe previously I was in the member of this group. Uh, previously I was in the member of, sorry, not this one. Use a role. I was the member of SQL group, that's why maybe. But anyway, uh, if I want to get my access here, um, I have to add myself here. Add backup administrator, browse, and then ADM as Mugandar and check. And okay. And hit okay. So this is how actually you're going to add people to provide them access on the P Center. Sorry, not business, sorry, it's beam backup. Anyway, um, so the uh, one more thing. Now, actually, uh, based on the documents, what I need. So we are done with this, right? We, we are, we are uh, we able to log in uh, beam backup console and then adding virtual infrastructure. Now we're gonna add the infrastructure, which infrastructure we want to take a backup, right? So based on that, now I'm going to add the infrastructure, but before I add the infrastructure here, what happened? Okay, let me go back to uh, Vim SRV with the Vim service account because all kind of configuration I want to do through the service account. The reason you have to do the service account because never ever any kind of application installation configuration never ever you can do with your uh, administrative account or your regular account. Don't do it because you never know and how long you're gonna stay with this company. Maybe if you if you quit or if you leave the organization and later on if somebody else come, how they're gonna take over uh, this. And, and also, whenever you leave the organization, someone from the like active directory side, they will remove your user account. And then the backup con configuration, whatever you did, everything will suffer because it's not gonna see the service account. So it will not be able to functional. And like, it's not gonna be functional. So, so that's why you should always use service account because service account all, all the time is gonna be Stay with the organization. So just remember the, uh, these steps. Uh, I'm going to close this window. Uh, so
sign out from here and then i'm gonna sign in again with the service account see now i'm going to log in as a subbeam service account so whatever the configuration i'm gonna do i gonna i want to do it with my uh, with the service account so just wait a little bit and i'm going to minimize this one maybe i can open this one so i'm logging as a beam service account Okay, I logged in, right? So, from the backup infrastructure, from the backup infrastructure, managed a server. So, what kind of in, in, infra, infrastructure you want to manage? So, you can say add a server, or you can click here on this is called Riven. From the Riven, you can select infrastructure, then manage ser, under the manage server, add server, and then what kind of infrastructure server you want to manage or backup? So it can be VMware BSphere, that means VMware virtual environment, Microsoft Hyper V, oh, sorry. Uh, and also individually, you can take a backup um, uh, like a physical machine. If it is running on physical machine in Microsoft Windows or physical machine running with Linux and AWS, Azure backup, it's a lot of other 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 cloud backup. This are, these are the cloud backup. These are the these two are physical. These two are virtual. This is what um, Beam support. So we are going to select VMware BSphere, and you can connect VMware BSphere environment through BSphere vCenter server or SXA host individually SXA host. So the reason they give you two options because if you have a very very small company just with uh, two or three SXA host, no build center. In that case, you can add SXA host. But if you have a B center, in that case, you don't need to be worried about the standalone SXA host. You just need to add the B center, and through the B center, you're going to get all the SXA host inside the B center. And if you have a multiple B center, you can add multiple B center. And B cloud director, you can also connect to the B cloud director. But in our case, we are going to connect with the BS pair. So when you can be VSphere and this is specified DNS name or IP address of your vCenter server. So you have to provide the your vCenter server IP address or the FQDN or DNS name and credential. So you can directly provide the um, vCenter server uh, single sign-on administrative credential, or you can add uh, our service account to the vCenter as a single sign-on. So that's what I'm gonna show you right now, how you can provide the access. And if you don't have access on the vCenter, then open a ticket, send the request to your vCenter admin. Hey, can you add this X service account? I'm gonna use this service account uh, to, take a, to take a backup uh, for the whole VMware environment. So I need to have this account needs to be added on uh, vCenter as a single sign-on user. So based on your request, maybe the BM, uh, BMR admin, or maybe you, if you have access, so you can go say, for example, uh, from the menu bar, this is the B center from the menu bar, uh, from the menu bar, uh, if you go to the administration and then uh, users and groups, and you can go groups and see here, um, let's see how many, I have the next page is nothing. So the, on the first page, administrator, right? Edit group or administrator. So when you click the administrator, so this is vCenter single sign-on administrator. And this is our syslab administrator. So you can add here, add as a member, add. <clears throat> That is a member. What kind of member? This is a beam 
service. Account, beam service account. And add them on, on the local PR, um, prbcenter.com. Actually, this is I remember. Okay, so our our user is not in this domain. Our user is in under the syslab, right? So syslab, select the syslab and then search beam serve. See, beam serve is showing here. So now beam serve is added and then save it. So now beam serve service account because we have already service account, right? If you guys can remember, I shows on the active directory here. If you look at um, See here, service account, BIM service account, right? Also, we have a group. So either way, um, if you, you can you can add individually like this, or you can add the whole group. Whole group, how what is, uh, how we can add the whole group? Just you can say uh, you can say this lab, and then you can say service account group, right? Or the whole group and save. So all, you don't need to individually assign. It, it's up to you. If you think other, other users needs to be have access, you can add them like this. All right, I'm not going to add this one right now because I already added the uh, service account here. So through the service account, I'll be able to discover the, the like the whole B center and all the ESXF hosts inside the B center and also the, all the BMs, right? So that's what I'm gonna do right now. So the name, the name, I have to find, actually, I, have, I need to be confirmed where the name of the B center and so I'm just looking the DNS name. I know it's IP address is 99. Uh, this is the IP address. See here. So our actual B center, DNS name is this and IP address is this, so either one. You can use either one. Let's do it with the name. Uh, let's just add it. Uh, here, right? So provide the name. Click next, credential. Add a credential. What credential? Browse. Beam SRV. Check. So beam as service .com, this user account has access on B center, right? So that, that will be worked as a syslab B center uh, hyphen in you know, the description you can say, you can say B center, single sign on, single sign on, sing SSO. Here then, credentials. Okay, and what's the password? So what about the password for your service account? Okay, click okay. So now you can apply. Okay, now it's looking for um, certification. Server anyway cannot be granted. Okay, continue. Now it's checking the connection. All right. It says starting infrastructure item update process. So now it's adding B Center server here. Collecting disk and volume info.
next and finish. All right, so we got our vCenter here. vCenter server is here. You see, now you're gonna see everything. The whole vCenter you're gonna browse from here. See, three hosts. And also it has master. This is one host which is we are treating as a primary and this one we are treating as a secondary. And also inside we have a cluster. So everything is here under this vCenter, right? All right, so we successfully added vCenter server. Now what else? So based on our documents, we added, we added this part and also we did this. All right, so one of the next steps, okay. Configure backup proxy. Now you're gonna configure the backup proxy. So how are you gonna configure the backup proxy? So before I add any machine in the backup proxy, so for example, I have a plan to add this one, this one, this one. As a backup proxy, if you can check, computer management. Okay. Administrator system domain admin. So beams beam serve this account has a <clears throat> administrative privilege access that's why this through this service account i'm able to log in each and every machine i make a plan to add as a proxy right Talk proxy or get a server but some cases most of the organization um on on their like remote desktop settings by default it has a check mark here or, or or through the GPU, it has a check mark here. If it has a check mark like this, in that case, if I have an account, still I am not gonna be able to do the RDP on this machine because of this. In that case, what I have to do, I have to add myself as a local administrator in each machine because this beam service account, I have to add beam service account as a local administrator in each Windows machine or each Linux machine, if I want to take a backup, because there will be, there is a, some configuration. If you want to take the whole machine backup and inside file level backup, SQL backup, in that case, Beam service account supposed to have access as a local admin. So how you can accomplish this? So now if I look at here or any other machine, Right now I'm able to do the RDP here because the reason is right now <clears throat> this option is not enabled, but if it is enabled by most of the case, all of the organization, they have this one check mark to their GPU policy. So in that case, you cannot log in there. So you have to apply another GPU policy to make the service account as a local admin, as a local admin means if any machine, whenever you log in, if you go to the computer, if you just type computer, then it's gonna pop up computer management. And from the computer management, from the computer management, it's coming up. All right. If you go to the local users and groups, and this is the local administrator, 
So if you double, double click on it, if you double click on it, you're gonna see here who has access. So either you have to add the service account individually each and every machine, but it's gonna be very tough if you have like 1000 virtual machine, Windows machine, is, is it possible to go each and every machine and just add them like this? So in that case, how we can how we can how we can do that? So within short time, whenever after we apply the GPU, we're gonna see a B, B center server gonna be added here. As a member. So what are you gonna do as a local administrator? If we expand it. Okay. So how we can do that? Just simply create a GPU policy. I'm going to create a GPU policy uh, for this. So it depends on you and your organization actually, but or if somebody is managing this, say for example, activity is not managed by you. In that case, what are you gonna do? So you can maybe open a ticket and you can send a request. Hey, I need this service account to be part of all the BMR, like all the virtual machines um, as a local admin. So the active directory admin will figure out actually how he gonna assign this service account as a local admin to all the Windows box or Linux box. But if you manage the you know, activity environment, in that case, you can do that. You can just create a simple GPU policy. So how you can create a GPU policy, say for example, right click new GPU policy name, uh, local admin. Local admin policy. So I just created a local admin policy. Okay, it's just a policy. It's, it's it's just a name, nothing else here. So you have to go to the edit option, and then from the edit, from the edit, uh, window settings. Security. So restricted group, where is the restricted group? Here, restricted group, right? So on the restricted group, right click on it, add a group, browse. Actually not this one, restricted group. Oh, actually, yeah, this one. The center. Actually, B and bin SRV. So what is our sort of B E M B E E A M S R V, right? I did the right thing. Group or B okay. It says group looking for groups. Okay. And here actually you have to add a groups. So we already created the groups, right? You cannot you cannot add individual users. So that's why we have we have a service account group, right? So if you check it, okay, you got it, and okay. Now, so this is the group name. Actually, no. It's so wrong. You have to add a group, browse, administrator. Administrators. Check. Administrator group, right? So now on the administrator group, actually forget about this one, delete it. So administrator group, Go to the properties, configure membership for administrators. This group is a member of. Membership for the administrator, this group, okay, add. Now you can add service account group, right? Okay. Okay, so you add one. And also you can do, um, which server we checked? 
So we have another domain user, right? So domain administrator also you can add. Whoever is the whoever is the part of domain admin, they also have the access. So you can do you can assign this uh, this user also. If you want, if you want, you can do domain admin. So whoever is the domain admin access, they're gonna have direct access to that. Domain admin, admins, like this. And if you want more, say SQL group, right? Like this, I believe. Uh, sorry, SQL. SQL group check okay okay so SQL group and apply and okay all right so this is the policy I just created so <clears throat> I added some groups inside as administrator which is this administrator which is this administrator now let's see what happens so uh go back to the here so this is the gpu i just created i'm going to close it and this policy just click on the top of the folder like a uh, ou and refresh it and then um on the domain level or maybe uh where's the computer objects all the computer objects is here right so on the object uh, the, on the parents objects uh, oh, you if you link this GPO, okay, what is the local admin, right? It's a local admin policy and add. So now it's added. So now we have maximum server is under BA and under NY. So if you look at NY and go to the total policy, it's, see, it's linked automatically. It's inherited here. So the policy is already linked. Now what you can do is just refresh, 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 and then come here on this server and right click on it. You can do through the PowerShell or, or CMD command, but uh, I will go to the CMD and say GP update slash force. Sometimes it doesn't work properly. In that case, you can go back to the CMD, but you can still run on PowerShell. So I'm just getting the GP, whatever the GP I applied, I want to get the result immediately. That's why I'm running GP update force result on this machine. But the, how about the other machine? The other machine will not get, we're not gonna update it because the GPU policy is by default, it takes two hours to implement to the uh, client. Whatever the server is under the Active Directory, it will get the GPU policy like within two hours. So it, it, it will take two hours. But if I was immediate, uh, immediate action in that case, I have to run GP update force. So I'm just testing here. So I already, Run it. If you go to here, see here. Now it has a domain admin, service account group, and SQL group. So that's what you have to do. All right. So now go back to the this configuration. Add a server. All right, backup proxy. So right now I have how many backup proxy? I have this is the this is the main one. Beam backup proxy, backup proxy as in. See the same machine is showing here. Beam or backup proxy, and this is original backup proxy, and it's just as in. Actually, this is the main one. So now, if you want to add more, what are you going to do? Add backup proxy or add VMR backup proxy. And it's up to you. Add a new Microsoft Windows. So you can do this way or you can do from here. Manage. Add a server, you can add like this. Same thing, right? Same thing you're getting. Uh, so, and also you can do 
backup proxy. So I think this one is a good idea, add a proxy. Backup proxy, VMware backup proxy, VMware CDP proxy. So you can say simply backup proxy. Okay, add a new. So where's the IP address or name of the server? Say for example, uh, so the primary beam proxy one, we want to add this one. So this is, this is this is the one, right? This is the one we, we want. So I'm going to the copy this one oh, oh, here, right? So dot syslab.com and click next. Now the credentials. So now I don't need to use like my account or some block or administrator or at syslab because <clears throat> I can use the same account or you can maybe add account, you can say same account because beam service account. The reason I'm adding one more because the first one I specify as a B-Center single sign-on, right? So, but, but same account, same thing. This uh, domain service account I added on the B-Center, I added on the uh, GPU policy to uh, have uh, like local admin permissions. So you can use the same thing or if you want, you can add uh, the separate, but same thing. Anyway, same thing. So, B A M B S R V, search it. Got it right. So you can say sister beam and this one will be your Windows credential, right? Windows local admin login. And the password is. Right, then hit OK and click Next. All right, transport will be installed. So now Beam, Beam is going to be installed a component called transport. After you click apply, these components will be installed on the target host. So what is the target host? This is the target host, right? So if you go here, control panel. Now I'm going to add this machine as a proxy. So this is how you can add a proxy server. And why are you gonna add the proxy server? Because whenever you configure a job, maybe four job, you're gonna run this proxy, another four job, you're gonna run another proxy. That's why, to distribute the load. So if you go to the add demo feature, you see here, beam service installer, installer service. So you're gonna see a couple of, uh, one more maybe uh, beam service account, uh, beam service uh, agent. So let's, let's initiate it. So say apply. Now it's going to be apply and install. It will take a little bit of time. The detection operating system, detect OS version, create temporary folder, uploading beam transport MSI package. So it's, it's just uploading the package there and then it will start installation. All right, it's dated. Okay, it's done, almost done. Inst installing package transport, now it's installing. So you can add multiple proxy as, as much as you want. It depends on your organization size, your infrastructure size. So in our case, we have a plan, just one proxy server on our primary side, another proxy server in our DR side, if we do some DR transaction, like transaction means replication or maybe DR server backup, all those things we're gonna configure to that proxy. And also we have a gateway server. We, we're gonna add the gateway server shortly. All right, so it shows it's successfully completed. Windows server saved successfully, click next. 
and finish. So when you finish it, choose a server at the NAS file and host, okay. Now you have to see here, my, uh, maximum con uh, concurrent task is four. So based on your CPU, actually you can add four, 16 or whatever the concurrent job you can run. So if you have a four CPU BCP configured in that case for at a time four, time, four jobs, that means one job can use one CPU. So if you can multiple CPU, you can maybe add more uh, concurrent job. Click next. But four is de de default. Okay, traffic role. You can view or manage network traffic rules if you have any. Click next, review, and then apply. Now this one added as a Okay. So after this, we're gonna add our dear site proxy server. Almost done. Okay, so this uh, was successfully created, right? I finish. So now we have another proxy here, right? And also, okay, so proxy. So backup repository default, which is our main one, master server. And proxy, we have now two proxy actually, basically. Okay, same one, let's try this one to add as a BM or backup proxy. So it's look like it's an ascent based proxy. That means if you want to back up a physical machine, in that case, those job you can run through this is gonna work perfectly. But I don't know actually, uh, I can add the same machine as also as a BMR. Look like I can because the default one is created two proxy. One was as a BMR, another one is as a base. So I believe I can do the same machine as as an and plus BMR. So I can use same machine Whenever I run a job for like a physical machine backup, I can <clears throat> assign this one as in based. And whenever I configure any job for taking backup for my uh, uh, virtual machine, in that time, maybe I can forward that workload to this, um, the other one, which is which one I'm going to now add. Let's see actually how I can add it as a DM backup proxy. Okay, the same thing. Uh, this one, right? Transport mode here, what is the transport mode? Automatic selection and of course, try to add this one as a network. Automatic selection or network, network selection is really good because all the transaction is happened by network. Or if you do automatic, it's gonna actually automatically select your network. So choose automatic, it's fine. And cancel data, sorry, connected data store, recommended. 
automatic selection, manual selection. So if you don't have anything, so you can say automatic now. And max count four, you can increase it based on your traffic rule, apply. So now actually, this is the component for proxy. I didn't study it to configure the job. I will do it because I want to make sure I have all kinds of components to configure a job properly. Okay. So the same server I have as the agent, I have the VMware. So same thing, I wanna add a backup proxy, right? Which one? Which this is our second one, dear side. So which one is dear side? Um, primary, this is the dear side, right? Proxy number two. So the proxy number two, I'm going to add Sorry, you have to select, also you have to add, add it, add, and then provide the name, the domain name, and description, you can say, uh, in the description, say DR side, actually the last one, I didn't provide any description. You can say DR side, as in base proxy. Dear set as in base, base proxy. And the credential, same thing. Uh, this one, Windows local admin, right? You can use this one. It's fine because, oh, I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm sure because the GPU doesn't apply yet, but anyway, the service account has that privilege access, so it can. Click next, apply. So it's gonna take a little bit of time. In the meantime, I want to show actually what changed whenever we add this machine as a backup proxy, what is installed. So if you just refresh, see here, transport, business integration, installation, hardware provider. So one, is installed for one is installed for uh, virtual machine, another is for physical machine plus other transportation service. So each proxy you can add two ways. One way as a um, as in base proxy, another one is VMR virtual proxy, right? So which, what we learn from here, when we add, add this one, okay. I actually need to complete this one first. So yeah, it's gonna be a very long video. The reason is to accomplish this, the whole beam backup infrastructure to design and complete the configuration, you will, you will have at least two, three months. But right now I'm trying to show everything on one video, maybe on one or two hours. That's why it's a long video. Next and finish. All right, and then server, okay. This is your proxy server, right? Click next. Okay, but, but, uh, created by Syslab, I don't need. You can say it's the same thing. Your site as in based proxy. Dear side as a field proxy and click next, next, apply. And within short time, it's going to be applied. All right, it's working very fast. So not taking that that much long.
All right. Look like pretty fast. So, so all the Windows machine. Okay, next. All right. So we have an, our another proxy. This one, right? This one. And uh, this totally, I think I have still time to provide the description. You can say, so what is this one for? As in base, right? You can say primary side as in base proxy. Oh, it's gonna add it again? Sure. Okay, so actually you have to change it uh, like this. I can say properties. And in here, you can say primary side. What, 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 what is it called? BMR, right? So you can say BM, BMR, based proxy. And I, I'm not gonna change anything else right now. All right, now the same machine I can add as a what? VMware backup proxy, right? The same machine. So I do I need backup proxy. This is DR1, right? Okay. So this one. Oh, actually, no. You can add. The same machine name, we can select that one because for the description, it looks like uh, it's, not, it's confused me. That's why I'm adding again the same machine, DR proxy to dot syslab.com. And this one is not as in, this one is actually. VM, VM base proxy, okay. Oh, hey, I did a mistake. This is not a primary. This is DR. DR side, VMR base proxy. Oh, this already exists, I cannot do that. So what I have to do? I have to select this one, the resin base. But in here, I can mention this is actually the uh, BR side BMR base proxy. And selection again, transport mode, uh, automatic, or you can say network. Network is also recommended, but you can say automatic, so you cannot select automatically. And click next. Apply. It's gonna upload in short time. So, so far we added two proxy server and each proxy server we added as a SN based and also the VMware base, right? So based on our job, like which job is taking back up our whole of the all VMware stuff like the uh, virtual machine. So in that case, we're gonna use the beam proxy one, uh, VMware proxy. And if we back up any kind of, say two job we are running, uh, for one job is running for physical machine, the database physical machine, another job is running for some application physical machine. So one job we can put on proxy number one, which is, is assigned for as an, another one we can use, the second proxy can use for our other job, that's why we have like th these two types. Click next and finish. So we successfully added our both uh, proxy and now re repository. 
So repository is actually the storage where you want to store the backup, where you want to store the backup, right? So um, in our documents right now, okay, assign backup proxy role to the uh, proxy role to add server, which one we already did. Automatic selection, connection data, network traffic management. Configure the backup repository. So now we're gonna do this one, repository backup, okay? So add backup repository. So we go, this is our share path actually. And if it's share, we're gonna do that now. So I have, I have the documents and you should have like the, all the required share path and storage path, you should have it handy. So whenever you do configuration, you can just assign it. So now add a repository, right? Click add. So direct attach storage. That means Microsoft Windows or Linux server, if you want to add as a, as a direct attach storage, you can add through this. And if it is a network storage, network share, you can say NFS share or SMB share. Um, ours is NFS share, right? NFS. NFS. Let's see. Okay, let's see my documents. Oh yeah, it's NFS share. So we're gonna select the NFS share. But again, cancel it, yes. Again, Add a repository, network share, you'll, you'll have SMB share. So if you have a SMB CIFS share, like for example, if you want to add some uh, SMB share from ISO storage, in that time, you should select this one. Go back here. And if you have a uh, deduplicating storage appliance, if you have a Dell EMC data domain, if you have a Dell EMC data domain, select this one. If you have a X grid, add this one. HP store one, add this one. Quantum DXI, add this one. Now it's up to you, which one you wanna add. And object storage. So object storage means it's a cloud storage. If you want to take backup, so you configure the backup job, but where are you gonna put your backup? So if you have to put the backup on your cloud directly, in that case, you should select object storage. So S3 uh, uh, compatible, uh, which is uh, Amazon AWS, and also Amazon S3 bucket, Google Cloud bucket. Um, actually, of uh, the first one is S3 compatible means it's not Amazon, actually. Any kind of cloud storage, maybe it's not the name brand, uh, company, so you can add, you select this one, but if it is Amazon, then you can select this one. If it is Google, you can just select this, IBM, Microsoft Azure. So all this stuff's for cloud, directly to the cloud. So in our case, now we're gonna do it this one, NFS share, because we have an, we are using NFS share. Uh, okay. Next. Oh, sorry. This is the name. This is the re repository name. So you can say, this lab in first structure backup. This lab infrastructure backup. And you can change and mention, you can change here the description. You can put the same thing or different thing, it's up to you. Now the share path actually, this is the path. And repository, gateway server. So we don't have the gateway server now. Uh, master server is working as a gateway, but now this is the very, very important. Before I add this, I should add, uh, I didn't include on my documents, but I should add a um, gateway server. So let's do it at a gateway server first. 
app repository direct attach microsoft windows so this one actually this is not we are adding as just doing our storage backup we are adding as a gateway so you can say get gateway server you can say primary site gateway gateway server okay the primary site gateway server so just i for my uh, just i want to remember uh Configure backup repository. So in here, step five, this will be step five, and this will be four. Configure the backup repository. And you can say, add Gabriel server. Add, add, add gather server. To the repository. Okay, and then uh, I'll I'll uh, update this uh, ship uh, later on. I'm just going to um, get a server on the from the primary side. Uh, and I'm going to take just a screenshot of it. And go to the thing. Just quickly, I'm just taking this note. Like what, are you, what are we are going to do? Just add a repository. Add a repository. And then come up with a name. Also description. Right? So, and the rest of the item we will take later on. That's fine. So I can put it on the description that so I can remember later on. And I'll develop this one later on. Okay. So click next. Now repository server. To add. Add and DNS name. So what is the DNS name of our gather server? This is our gateway server, right? Primary gateway server. And this is the primary gateway server. Just copy and I'm going here. Start here dot and you can say primary right get gateway server. I can take another screen share of it very quickly. It's not going to take that long. Uh, that's it here. So I can just uh, say on the server tab to add, and then provide the name and provide the description. That's it. Quickly. All right. So I click next. Now credential. So we know the credential, right? For admin. Click next. So that's why it's very important. Ahead of time, you have to send requests, whatever the place you need to send. And if you have direct access, just provide the access. That's it. And everything. <clears throat> Makes handy just whenever you configure the 
then back up because on the instruction time you need all those things. Okay, transformation uh, will be installed. Okay, apply. I don't mind to apply. So we just need to be so it will create a more smooth operation. Long way to go. All right, so it's successful. Click next and finish. So now we have a gather server here, right? And this one I'm going to add. Also populate, what's gonna show the populate? Maybe it's gonna be show the all the hard drives. So I'm not, I don't need hard drives. Okay, okay. So one thing we can do is from the previous screen, screen so show this e drive and click next as a repository path. You can see populate, and now it's going to be okay. Everything else I'm leaving as a um, default. Align backup file data block. So significantly improves backup and restore performance. Backup and restore while reducing storage CPU uses by avoiding under. Uh, uh, and align input output increase backup size by the less than 2%. So this is what is doing by default is selected. Use per machine backup files, improve backup performance for storage devices benefiting from multiple input output stream. This is recommended settings when backing up to enterprise grade block storage and to duplicate storage. So you can check on this one too, both. Okay, and click next. The system of the switcher volume does not support fast cloning. Okay, yes, no problem. Okay, mount server. Uh, when I get a mount server, we should do this one, right? Switch so way a server to mount backup to when perform data advanced restore file application item and install BM recoveries. Okay. Specify a server, a server to mount backups. So yeah, this one actually uh, instant recovery require our write cache folder to store changes blocks. Okay, we can use this one too as a mount server, the get server. Click next. Okay, apply. And it will take a little bit of time. So eventually we're gonna add the second one also, and it will take time. And after we add both gateway server and mount server, and also gateway server as a mount server, then we are done with all the components and then we can start uh, configuring the job. So preparing the environment is really, really important how you prepare the environment to speed up your backup.
So the get a server, actually I need to increase, let's go. Uh, because I sense for all machine, I sent four CPU and uh, the installing time, I increase this one to eight CPU and 12, uh, so 12 GB of uh, memory for the master one, but for the gateway server also we need uh edit so this one we need to increase eight or twelve minimum eight and uh, memory should be say, 16 okay and all of them all of them we should increase this ghetto server we need to increase edit then add it to eight minimum and this is 16. Okay. Sixteen. Okay. And this one is left. So I can add this one. All right. So go back to here. All right, uh, let's start with uh, restore process. So, uh, so far we already did all kind of configuration and also we already took backup. And now we have, uh, we just configure one job, but in your case, it, it's gonna be multiple jobs. So if you know how to configure one job, you can, you, you'll be able to know like multiple job. That's pretty easy. Um, so, so far uh, we configure one job and we take about two uh, virtual machine backup. And these two backup is complete, successfully completed. If you look at on the disk, this is the backup. We have total two restore point. So one full backup and one um, how is how you can say like how how you know is how many backups. So restore point is two, but is full backup or is in, 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 incremental? So if you right click on it and if you say okay, um, restore entire VM, or you can go through the ribbon here, like you can click all this icon is called re ribbon. So uh, if you click on restore entire VM. I'm not going to restore it right now, but I just want to show you what's going to be happening. When you want to restore the whole BM. So when you restore the whole BM, you can check, select the BM, or if you don't know the exactly BM, you can just search here. You can type the BM name and search it. You will get it. And then, um, so there is a lot of alternatives way. So for example, you're not going with this. If you go like, like the backup home restore. You just go restore to be a spare. You don't know actually which machine you are going to back up, right? So restore from backup. You just click here, restore from backup. Enter BM backup, right? So um instant recovery and enter BM restore. So instant recovery. What is instant recovery? Instant recovery means whenever you click the instant recovery, the machine automatically goes to your uh, like its original location. And it's gonna be power on. Uh, you can power on, or it, or it's gonna be power on. And then the machine gonna be run on your environment, but the machine disk it will not gonna be sitting on your uh, VMware storage. It's gonna be on your backup storage. So the VM would gonna be run from your backup storage. And if you, and then, your application will be available. In the meantime, you can do storage bmotion from storage, um, from the backup storage to your um, uh, VMware storage, as case storage, whatever the storage. So this is called instant recovery. That means within short time, you will get your machine back. And the entire VM restore, which will take time. So after the uh, restore process done, then you will be able to power on, or there's options you can restore it. And also there is options for restore from cloud. Okay, enter VM restore. So if you go through these options, you don't know which one, then you can search the machine name. 
So you can say assist, um, maybe DW uh, 19, something like this, right? So you're gonna get it here. So when you get it, you can say, you can select it, and then you're gonna get it, and you can say point. So same options you're getting, right? And you can check here, this is the backup job we have so far. So it's infrastructure backup repository. This is, this is our DR recovery. So we have two copy. One is on the DR side, one of our uh, infrastructure. Why we have two copy? Because if you look at here, job, backup, replication, and backup copy. So backup copy is our secondary copy. So you can get it from anywhere. So if this one doesn't work, you can get it from there. So, all right. So in here, we have two backup, full and incremental. So either one, you can just, you can select and then click OK. And you can click next. And it's restored to main, uh, restored to the original location. So where it was before. So you can, okay, let me join there. Click next. So right now on the B, uh, B center, uh, this is my machine there. Maybe for, think about for some reason, this one is corrupted. You are trying to restore it, right? So, and also, you, so right now this machine is sitting on. Master host, which is this host, right? So if you want to like put this machine on different host, you can select different host. You can select different host. But all, and also the original location. Original location means it's going to be come here, master host. So on your restore process, you need to specify restore to the original location, restore to the new location with the different settings, or stage restore. So this one is pretty simple. It will go automatically. It will select um, whatever it, settings it has before. But if you choose restore to a new location, in that case, it's gonna be a different story. It's gonna be a different story. All right. And you can click next and then it's gonna be asked for a reason. But if you select, if you select restore to a new location, in that case, what's gonna be happen? What's gonna be happen? So you have to select, see, select multiple BM and click host to apply the change. So you have to click host, which host you want. So right now this one is running on master host. So you can say, okay, I want this one to be here or maybe here, anywhere, right? So click and okay. And then click next and resource pool, <clears throat> BM name. Resource pool, you can select the resource, you can, you can select the resource pool. So which resource pool you want, management, and you can say, okay, so it's change management, and click next, and then data store, which data store you want. So you can select the data store, multiple data store you can choose. So this is the same source or this type, and data store, you can choose the data store. So under this, whatever the data store you have, you can choose data store, you can say, okay, and click next. So um, that's how you can do it. And then folder, uh, if you think there, there'll be a specific folder, you can choose the folder from here and also you can go next, okay. Infrastructure, okay, folder. If you think there is a folder you want to change, then uh, you can change it, infrastructure or maybe something else, whatever you want, um, anything. Data database or something. I, I'm just randomly selecting and click next. Just to BM text. No, I don't have BM text, so it's click next and network. So on the trigger side, network, what's the networks? So on this host, which network? Say BM network. Okay, click next. And then that's it. 
click next is going to be restore different location so i show you uh, the original location and the different location for the entire bm restore now i want to show you another uh, very interesting things so you don't need to <clears throat> restore the entire bm but if you need to restore any files folders files means like document files excel files is deleted from a uh, data store or like uh, your your hard drive like machine hard drive so how you can restore it or maybe um, if you think about the active directory so activity users like for example somebody delayed a user how you can restore it from the backup it's just an object so and and also if you want to do that kind of restoration in that case on the backup job of course you have to mention one thing that's very important on the backup job when you set it up make sure you mention this one uh second guest processing enable application error processing if this one is not check mark you cannot you will not be able to restore the object files or anything so that's very important and also if that backup job is taking back of your database in that case also you can restore the transaction log or or the uh, all kind of uh, database backup you can restore from here but the other problem is if you back up your database i I told you previously, if you back up um, your database, you want to back up your database through this, make sure you are not running with any kind of native backup tools. Native backup means uh, maintenance plan backup. If you run internally native backups, which is maintenance plan backup, then for the database, don't check mark on it. Because it's gonna be a trunk, like, Locked on uh, trunker issues, so don't do that for for the database. If you you know you are you are taking or your team taking uh, native backup database native backup in that case, so it's pretty it's 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 important. It's important. Like just remember it. It's important. All right. And also, if whenever you enable it, it's gonna ask for your um uh, authentication. So. Make sure all the BMs, whatever the BMs you're taking the backup, or BMs or, or physical machine or virtual machine, whatever you're taking backup with this job, make sure all the machines, your service account has access to all of your machines. That's another important thing. Otherwise, it will not be able to take the backup and backup will be fair. All right. So now I want to show you to me, I have Active Directory backup. This is my Active Directory machine. So I want to show you in very interesting things. So I have a user here and under the account system admin, admin site Mojunga, right? So I'm going to delete this user. So if I, by mistake, it's deleted. So it's not anymore, right? It's not anymore. Now how I can restore it from the backup. So go back to the backup. Go to the here, go to this one. So this is my activity I know. This is the backup disk. So what I need, I need guest file, right? Uh, oh, sorry, not guest, it's the application. It's the object, application object, right? So application object, it, 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 like being provided, Microsoft Active Directory, Microsoft Exchange. That means if you uh, delayed any email from the email, if you backed up the Exchange server, so from, and you can, you can uh, restore email from here. And uh, Microsoft SharePoint, if any SharePoint content delayed it, you can restore it from here. Microsoft SQL Server, Microsoft OneDrive, Microsoft Teams, Oracle. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you just one example for Active Directory. So from here or from here anywhere, you can just select Next and click Next. And then you have to click Browse. So it's going to open another window, which is called BIM Explorer. BIM Active Directory Explorer. So through this Explorer, it's opening.
All right. All right. So, uh, Beam Backup and Replication, this window is Beam Explore for Microsoft Active Directory. Uh, so, this is uh, my domain controller and users and computers, groups, group policy. See here, all the group policy is pretty nice. Uh, so, accounts. I have deleted accounts from <clears throat> this one, right? System admin, this one, admin side, right? So, I'm going to restore it. So how are we going to restore it? Restore object to the this domain controller. Rest, uh, restore object to some other place or export it. So I I need here, right? So let's click here and it's going to restore within short time. All right, it's done. So now I'm going to close this window because I don't need this window anymore, right? Okay. So now I need to check. So it's not here. I just need to have what? If I do the refresh, still it's not here, right? Just do a refresh. See, so the user is here. So it's pretty easy and it's really cool. Uh, so what else? And I want to show you the disk copy. It's a secondary copy. So I have, at the same time, I have another copy is going my, our dear side. So I'm running with backup copy, backup and replication. So replication copy, if you look at here, rep, uh, replicas, it's replicated. So two restore points is already replicated to dear side. So we can do the failover if something goes wrong with the primary side. So I'll show you shortly, but before I show you this one, um, I want to show you some other thing, which is, how you can take a file level backup. Yeah, oh, sorry, uh, share file backup. So share file backup means, say for example, if I go to, all right, I can, I can actually go from here. So say for example, uh, It's a lab data store. Okay, I have to log in there. All right, why is not accessible? Anyway, let's see. Um, I have a folder name. Uh, so for example, this one, under the beam storage. All right, can, okay, under the beam storage. Say for under the beam storage, uh, I have some data. I have some data here, right? So I want to mount this one and I want to take this one back up. I want like, oh. Okay, create a simple folder. So simple folder means say, um, you can say data, nothing else, data. And under this, I have two more folder here. Okay. I have two more, two or three more folder, okay. Right, so this data folder, I want to take backup on this data folder, okay? How I can add it? So from the inventory, not in actually backup infrastructure, from the backup infrastructure, um, home, home tab, home tab, home tab is not showing anything. Backup job, okay. Copy backup. But if you go to the inventory, on the home side, what do you have? Restore point, copy backup. And if you go to the infrastructure,
add a server. Add as a server, add a server means actually you're not adding a server, you're just adding it. Uh, it's not like that actually. Inventory, what you have inventory? File share. Okay, this is the options. File share. Add a file share. Go to the inventory and add a file share. So it's a file share, file share backup, right? Add a file share. So add a file share, click here, or you can click here. The same thing, same option gonna become file server, NAS file, NFS share, SMB share. Right, so ours is SMB share, and you can say like this, right? Require this share, require credential. No, you don't need the credential actually. And advanced option backup directly from the file share. Okay, so you don't need to change anything. Click next and backup proxy. Which one? Cache repository, dear get no, not dear get. Right? Actually, I'm uh, actually we're gonna use cache repository as a our get server on the primary side. So which one is primary get server? Okay, PRI. Actually, I uh, misspell this one. It's okay. And proxy, which proxy gonna be process this? You can specify a proxy. You can say backup proxy, the main one, or maybe other one. So this is our primary one, right? So okay, exit configuration and apply. Now click next and finish. So now it's done, right? So create a backup job. So now you just added a SMB share. See, your share is here, right? Your share is here, right? Or what can you do? Actually, uh, modify this one. I want the whole folders. So how we can modify? Okay, there is no way to modify. You should, right? No. Anyway, we can do it later. Actually, I want like to see all like the whole the parent one, which is beam storage. Then I can able to see all, and I can select whatever I want, right? But right now, I have to, I have uh like up to data and insert the data. If I have something, I can get it here. Yeah. All right, in, <clears throat> no worries. Um, edit file share. You can edit from here too. The same option you're gonna get it. Now you, you need to take a backup, right? So for backup, so you can do copy backup or you can right click on here, RSMB share, no, file share, okay. From the file share, you can say create a backup job. So you can create from here, create a backup job. So the backup job name is file share, right? File share, backup, maybe you can mention the what kind of file you're backing up. So you can, it, it's up to you. It's up to you. I'm just leaving like this. I click next and also in here you can put something like meaningful description. Click next and add the folder. So this is your share, right? Now I'm just able to see two. If I Add the share as a beam storage, not the data. So in that case, I I wanna see, I, I'll see like everything together, right? So that's not my mistake actually. Um, it's it's not actually a mistake. If you want, you can do that. All right. So, what do you want to back up? What do you want to back up? So for example, I want both backup. And click next. Which storage? Why do you want to backup? Backup repository, why do you want to backup? So you maybe, because I don't have any storage, so I, I'm going to do infrastructure. And how many days? So keep all versions for the 28 days by default, you can keep it and also keep previous files versions for how many years? Three years, okay. If you want, or if you don't want, you can leave it like this. 
And if you want to do this, then archival repository, archive repository, what should be the archive, archive repository? So we have archive here, right? Uh, archive. So you can select this one. And you can see all and also the advanced. And here keep all versions. And if you want to change something, you can change from here. Maintenance, storage, everything is by default. And click next. And secondary target. If you want to have a secondary backup, you can do the secondary backup also. And if you don't want, just leave it. Next. And what time you want? Run this job at 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock, whatever you want. It's going to take the backup, right? Or monthly, if you want monthly, well, it's fine. And every day is fine. Or maybe maybe some, some days, not for all days. Maybe not for Tuesday or Thursday or something like that. You can do that, no problem. And also you can set up the backup window like on the <clears throat> business hours, you don't want to have a backup. If any backup jobs run and it's crossed the uh, window, it's falling like uh, uh, working hours, it will terminate the job. So that's what also you can um, you, you can select from here. I already showed on uh, another job configuration. It's the same thing. And then apply and run this job now. So it's done. So if you go home and if you can see, look at here, the file share backup is running, right? The file share backup is running. Okay. So hopefully it's gonna finish within short time. And the other one thing, one other another one thing I important thing I forget to share, which is which is physical machine backup. So if you have a physical machine in your environment, how are you gonna back it up? Back up a physical machine. So you have to create a first protection group. You have, a, you have to create a first protection group. <clears throat> so the virtual machine, easily you can back up. You don't need to create a protection group, but if any kind of uh, Windows machine, virtual machine, but you are not using VM or virtualization, maybe some other third, um, other 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 virtualization like maybe Citrix. So Citrix, like I think, uh, Beam doesn't have anything for Citrix. So Beam cannot Beam cannot communicate with the Citrix. In that case, if something is out of the Beam, out outside of the Beam. Uh, uh, contract or something. So in that case, you have to deploy a beam as and there. So if it is a Citrix BM virtual machine, you have to install the as in on that machine. That's how uh, beam can communicate and take a backup. But for the BMR side, you don't need to, if it is a, it is a virtual machine, you don't need to deploy any uh, as in. So as in, like if it is a Linux, you can you can deploy Linux as in through the beam. And if it is a Windows, then you Windows um, as an through the beam. So whenever you create a protection group, through the protection group, it's going to deploy as an on your uh, machine. So physical machine is not, is not a virtual, it's not a VM, right? So physical machine, you need to install protection group. And you need to install a uh, um, beam as an there. So I'll show you shortly. Um, before I jump into... Uh, physical server backup configuration. I want to show you the file share, which one you are taking backup. It says it's success. So now I want to check uh, backup here. So this is my disk, right? I have another one, the file share. See, I have a file share, one backup. So now go back here. Say, for example, uh, from chapter 15. You delete all two files. You delete it. It's, it's gone, right? How you restore it? So come back here and say instant recovery, enter share, rollback, files and folders. So if you want to file and folders, you can come, come here. If you say enter share,
just wait a little bit. It's gonna show you, see here, and point, which point, if it is a multiple points, you can, okay, now which one he wants? Chapter 15, you, you need this two, right? Or this one, right? Or you want the whole thing? So, okay, whole thing. And next, in original location, right? Next. Replace the order files only. Replace, you have choice. So you click. And finish. So now you see storing. All right, we will verify it because it's going to take a little bit time. In the meantime, maybe we can check the other option. Maybe most probably it's going to be finished within short time. It's just in progress, record backup, infrastructure, being proxy, is processing. Three point nine megabyte, two files, zero folders, total four files. <clears throat> okay, all right, it's done, it's success. So, how long it take? Uh, 134, 25, I start, 134, 52. So it's not even 30 seconds, right? And close. So now let's check here. See, it's come back. See here? So I got back. I restored it successfully, right? All right. So now, I want to show you actually how you can create it. Inventory, physical infrastructure, add a protection group. So you have to add a protection group. But I don't have. Okay, syslab infrastructure. Syslab. Infrastructure, physical production, protection group. So I just come up with a naming convention for the protection group. It's up to you how you're going to name it, right? How you're going to name it is up to you. So name doesn't matter. It, it, it depends on you. Just for an example, this one, right? So I'm going to create a protection group if you want to take a physical machine backup. So for example, I'm going to take a backup. I'm going to actually set up inventory, um, physical infrastructure, right click on it, add a protection group, or you can click here, you see, here the protection group, create a protection group. So you can do from here, or you can do, click create from here. And provide the name for the protection group, and also you can say, um, physical server, you can say, um production physical server click next and microsoft active directory object microsoft active directory object right individual computer microsoft directory object because how you're gonna add the machine, physical machine, through what? Previously, virtual machine, we added through B Center. That's why we get everything together. We just added the B Center and we get everything together, right? So for the physical machine, it's the standalone machine, right? How you can get the information machine information. So you need to choose Microsoft Active Directory because if you have a physical machine, of course, that machine is all like I have a computer object on you, the active directory is already a member of object active directory, right? So that's why Microsoft Active Directory objects. Click next and search for objects in this domain. Okay, active directory search who's what is which domain controller. And account. So we have uh, been backup, right, for Windows. So this this account can work with this. And okay. Yes. So syslab.com is found, right? Now uh, from the Active Directory, add the machine. Which machine you wants to add for your 
which machine he wants to add. So computer object, and let's find out actually which one we want. DBA and also 2016 prod, say for example, this one, our WSS server. So think about our WSS server is not a virtual, it's a physical. Or if it is virtual, but I'm considering as a physical. So I'm selecting this one, WSS server. I'm just showing only one. You can have a multiple, maybe 20, 30, 15, one. Um, protection group is fine. Click next. All virtual machine, exclude all virtual machine, all components by default is selected anyway. Um, exclusion. If you want to do anything exclusion, you can do select from here. Following and then you can say add this and blah, blah, blah. So you can do that, but I'm not doing that. Let's click next credential. Syslet beam. I, and because in the beginning I said, Beam backup whenever you have a service account and make sure you assign this service account to all of your machine, if either virtual or physical, either it's Windows or Linux. But if you're not um, the owner of all the machines, then contact with the respective owner and tell them, hey, if you want to have a backup, could you please assign this user as a local admin? If it is a Linux or if it is a Windows. All right. So this master account will work for this. And click next. And rescan protection group. So every time it's going to be rescan means it's going to check the protection group, the folder you created for all the machines is active or not. So through the agent, because is going to deploy the agent. So through the agent is going to check. So schedule time is up to you when you want to check it. If you can do, okay, on this weekend, on these days, maybe you can select some, uh, you don't need every day. So maybe you can skip some days, skip some days maybe. And also you can maybe time is eight o'clock, whatever time you, you think is better, you can do it. It's not, it's not an issue. So it's up to you. Now install backup as an automatically recommended or to update backup as an in. It's a already check mark. Okay. So install change block tracking drive on Windows Server OS. Perform reboot automatically if required. So you can check this one too. And um, advance as in for restrict meter connection use. It's okay, you don't need to do anything. Notification, yes, so you can send the notification if you want, like whenever it's scanned, and it can send you the if it is success or if it's warning or if it's error, it can send you email. So you can put it in your email address there, or maybe you can assign a DL that is distribution list. That's how everybody will get the email notification if you want. Okay, so actually, uh, actually, I can make one mistake. Notification. Okay, oh yeah, I didn't do anything. That's fine. That's all. And click next. And now it's the review. Click next. All right, almost done. Click next. And run the discovery when I click finish. Yes, finish. So it's gonna be done, discovery, immediately. So now it's trying to log in there and installing that as in there. So now if you, what? If WSS, which one is our WSS? Uh, This one, WSS, no. Is this the WSS? So actually I did wrong. What's I did wrong? 
C is failed because this W source is not exist anymore. It's not exist. <laughs> That's why it's failed. <laughs> so don't worry. Uh, go back to the protection group. Delete this one. Oh, sorry. Uh, remove it. Remove this one. Yes. And you can go to the properties. Next. Next. And add from here. Find out computer object. So where we have this one. WSL. Let's actually find out from the Active Directory first uh, how we can find how we, how we can find out. Okay, so if you search from the domain, say find and change it to computer and search. All right, so two WSL shows because this one is not active. I should I should make it a disable account. Because it's not okay. So this one is working, right? We just logged in there. Uh, WSS, 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 this one, right? So I need to know it with the where's the location exactly. Go to the properties and object. So it's in computer object, Windows Server 2016, prod, and WSS. Okay. So I got the location. And now I need to go 2016 and then prod WSUS. This is the server WSUS. Okay. Click next. 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 Everything same. Everything same. We already did the configuration. Just I added. So later on, if you want to add more, you're going to do the same way. You can add more server <laughs> with the same um, protection group. And if you want to create a different production group, you can get the way I created this one. Okay. So run. I'm going to run the scan now. And on the WSS server, if you go to the control panel, uh, a demo program, where is that demo program? Here, right? So it's not, right now there is no uh, Beam as an install, but right now through this scan, through this scan, it's going to be execute. See, it's already success, right? It's already success. It says success. And close. What happened? Why it's not showing? Well, why is not showing here? He says this scan is successful, right? Scan is successful. But when you go to the inventory, why? Strange. Properties. Next, next. Which is there? Why it's not showing? I'm not sure. Why it's not showing? Oh, maybe this one partial machine explosion. That's why. Now it's showing because this is actually virtual machine, by I, but I treat as a uh, physical. But there is a exclusion tab, and uh, virtual machine is a check mark because under the Active Directory, under the Active Directory OU, 
you can have physical machine and you can have virtual. So whenever it is found, virtual is excluded. That's why you, you are not able to see it here. So you have to uncheck this one. I'll show you again. Now it's performing the scan. And through this scan is installing the SM there. And within short time, you're gonna see the all status. Not install here, right? So it shows not install, but right now it's performing the installation. That's why it's taking time. You're gonna see it in short time. And I have a plan to show you actually another thing. Just give me a second. So it's actually installing. It's actually installing the. See here, reboot required. That means it's already performed. It's failed. It's said the reason is his. Why? Because it's reboot required. Job finished with error. So if you go here, WSAS, and refresh this one. See, already beam already installed. CBTU is selected, that's why it's installed and also hasn't installed, right? And beam install service install. So now what do we need? We need to reboot, reboot this machine. So just do a reboot. So this is another important thing. If you want to treat any machine as a physical or if any physical machine you want to add with the um, uh, production group in that case Just give one second. All right, so I'm going to reboot it, right? Why didn't reboot it? Okay. So I just reboot it, close it. So this is reboot record, right? So when the reboot is done, How I know the reboot is done. Let's check here. What is the WSS? If the WSS, right? What's the status of WSS from the vCenter? Starting. So it's in progress. All right, so uh, this power on and now we can we can turn on from here. And from here, what we can do? We can re-scan it. So when you re-scan it manually, it's gonna check is there any as in a presence or not so if it is not there it's gonna it can install it all right now it's success right now it's success and also the status was installed right so that's how we can add more like if you want to add more post inside this protection group you can just go here and then go next and add and with active directory, select uh, computer object. So, because physical and virtual both can be on the same OU, right? That can be from the same OU, right? So, jump machine, okay, can okay. So, click next here, exclusion. Make sure you uncheck this one because when it's by default, it's a check mark because production group actually for a uh, physical machine. So, 
whenever it's checked, the activity you owe you and it's found in the machine as a virtual, it's going to exclude it. So make sure you uncheck it. If you want to add a virtual machine as a physical on inside the production group, if you need. But especially, uh, physical machine should be on a production group, and this one should be check mark. All right, this is the way you can add it. Now you can set up a job. So you have a production group. Now you can say you can set up a job, backup job. So how you can set up backup job? You can click on the ribbon, or maybe you can write it here. You can say backup. It's the virtual machine or Windows. This is Windows machine, right? Windows, maybe Linux, maybe Mac, right? Anything. So it's a Windows machine. So you select Windows. I'm not going with the virtual because we are treating. I don't have any physical machine right now. That's why I, I wasn't able to show you. And also in some case, maybe for virtual machine, you have to treat as a, as a physical and you have to take a backup like this one. So now this physical we are treating as a, uh, so the virtual machine we are treating as a physical and we are setting up a job. So you can say, uh, list production, physical or something. It's a name and also the description is up to you all the time. It's all the time up to you. And then click next and add. Now, add from like production group or individual computer. So we have already created the production group. If you add a production group here, so from the production group, you can select individual computer or you can select the whole production group. So the whole when you add the whole production group, that means later on, if you add any, any more machines on the production group, all of them will be covered with this job. We don't need to create a separate job. Click next, entire computer or volume level or file level. If you say file level, then it's going to take file level. So then you can, the, you want operating system? Yes, yes. you want the specific folder, add. So you have to the volume name, C, D, E, F, whatever you want, right? But we are going to take a uh, entire computer. Click next, storage. Which storage you gonna use for this? So you should have multiple storage. Now I have only infrastructure because I said I want infrastructure, right? And keep 30 days or retention policy depends on your organization, your company for policy. Some company for 60 days, some company take for 90 days, some company take for 30 days, it's up to you. And keep certain full backup longer for archival process, which is called GFS retention policy. So if you go here, you can say take it for a month, take it for a year. So it's up to you and how you want it. Maybe two months or maybe three months. Yeah, it's up to you. Based on your uh, team discussion or company policy. And advanced option. So the advanced option is synthetic full backup. Right, synthetic full or active full. So we are actually not taking the active full, we are taking synthetic full backup and maintenance. Perform backup uh, files health check every month, Friday, last Friday, storage, everything is fine. And notification, if you want to send notification to anybody, so mention here, uh, the DL or maybe individual email address. And actually we are not sending anything. So click okay, uh, click next. Enable application aware processing must, 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 because it will give you a lot of flexibility, not on entire machine. Because if if you don't need entire machine, inside the machine, if you uh, if you need to restore any folder, files, any objects, you can do that if you have this check mark. But make sure for database, except database. Database is exceptional. So some cases, database, you have to have this. Some cases, database, you don't need to have it. Because if you're running, uh, internal backup, uh, which is called native backup. In that case, you don't need it for the database uh, machine. All right. <clears throat> and oh, another thing I didn't describe, which is called enable guest file system indexing. Guest file system indexing is required when, when, actually when, when you need, this one you need only the time, uh, if, Say, for example, you have a uh, server, right? Instead of server, you have a share, uh, or if you have a big folder, 
a big drive and inside the drive there is a multiple users saving their files so how are you gonna know which folder has you can have a multiple subfolder inside the multiple subfolder you can have multiple files so specific files you want to search that will help if you if you enable this one that will help for searching option so most of the case you don't need it if you think you need it you can do it but it's gonna generate traffic load consume your memory your space so if you want you can do that most of the case most of the people they don't do that click next run job automatically this time this is the time you can change it the same thing it's a retry process is three times retried so retry failed that means if the job is running and it's some reason is failed it's gonna try one more time but when after 10 minutes then second time is failed then after 10 minutes you're gonna try again and backup job window terminate same thing the window the one i described before so i'm not describing anymore this one and say apply and finish. So on the schedule time is gonna start taking the backup. But this one is the first backup is not initiated yet. So whenever it has a scheduled time, first backup will be start. Okay. You can take now or you can take it later. It doesn't matter. So so far I show you everything for beam backup. Physical machine backup, and also one thing I didn't show you. I'm not sure if I, if I can show you. Okay, let's try, take a start backup. It's gonna take a long time. Uh, yes. I'm not sure how long it will take because the first time I'm going to take a full backup. So if you want to see again what's, what kind of configuration you did, you can just check like from here. Schedule time and everything is sure. So, yeah. So start and it's gonna take time because it's full full backup. It will take time. All right. So in the meantime, one thing maybe I can test, which is replication. So the replication I shows you already when I configured the replication. So this replication job is set up for one of the machine which is WSAS. So right now this machine is running. I'm I'm going to show you here. Uh, this WSAS is running, the IP address is 60. It's running on our master host. This is our primary side. And I configured this one. Like whenever we have a disaster on primary side, we're gonna, um, we're gonna uh, uh, fail over to the DR side. So we consider this host as a DR side and it's a different IP subnet. So now this one is, if you, if you look at here, Where it is? This uh, is on the master host. This is this one, right? So now this one is running on master host. So let's try to fail over, fail over to the DR side. All right. So let's try. Actually, DR DR test is take time, and my video is going too much long. But anyway, okay. So this is actually configuration I did. You guys already saw it, but I'm showing again. So this is the host IP and the storage and IP. So source IP, so which is 90.60 and target host when is I fail over to the tier side. There is 15.0.60, not 90.60, 0.60. 0 
and description if you want to have description you can put a description there's no issue and anything else everything else i already described just watch the previous step so now i have the copy it's already i have two replica copy so i can fill over now so how how you can do that see here when you select it when you select this one it says fill over now plan fill over so um so something happened fill over which one this one which point i have two point right which one do you want to fill over which snapshot is actually based on the snapshot right so the latest one or something you say okay and click next So you can do planned failover and you can do failover now. All right. So the starting failover BM to the state of the less than a day ago. Okay. Reverting BM to the restore point snapshot. Applying re-IP rules is working now. And let's see what's the status of here. The machine is still showing here. Let's see, it's going to be powered off within short time. This machine is going to be powered off. And this machine will move to here. Somewhere here within short time. But this, this job actually take time. Three lower in progress. And you have to wait for that. So it says powering on and failover complete successfully. So it's powering on, it's powered on the other, other host. So let's check. So actually what you did, so this is the difference. When you initiate, like you just select directly, you select directly, fail over, right? Now it's active. So it says fail over now. That means your production is done, but I didn't power off the machine. Without power off, I, did, I hit fail over now. I should do it whenever my machine is running, I should do it plan fail over. I should do it what? Plan fail over. So now you can undo failover, you can go back. Permanent failover, that means it's permanently failed over there and fail back to the production. So you can come back to fail back to the production. So there's the options. Now we can check here. Um, so we need to check actually, uh, it shows its power on. So it's already powered on. See, it's already re IP. It's already re IP. So you can use it. It's fail over to the DR side. See, see, I'm able to. Let's see if actually I can log in or not. It's failed over. Okay. So now this machine is running, okay.
ADMI-STRATO administrator. Okay, add this lab. Um, So the machine is slow because I'm running from uh, like uh, NFS storage system. That's why it's really, really slow, but it shouldn't be slow. That's slow. So yeah, successfully I am able to change it. See now it's running from where, from the replica. So now this machine is moved where. If you look at here, the post is ten, and IP is changed. See before it was ninety or sixty. Now it's sixty. So I'm able to log in here. Okay. Which one is replica? This one. This one, right? So now, it is slow, it doesn't matter. Uh, because of my storage system is slow. It's open, I, I, I successfully log in. So now I want to show you to the, how you can fail back. So whenever you, uh, primary side is uh like if you have something hardware issues you just turn everything and you power on and then you can fail back so how you can fail, fail back how you can fail back okay from here right so you can you can say fail back to the production this one select and this fail back to production so now when you click fail back to the production select this one right Click next, fill back to the original BM. Fill back to the original BM, we are storing in a different location. So we want this one, the first one. Click next. Now replicated BMs will be filled over to the production side as soon as the, they're ready or schedule time, what time you want, or manually. So I want auto, next. And power on the target VM after restoring. Okay, finish. So now it's going to fail back to the production side. So this is the way you can do that. In progress, it will take time. So let's see the status. Replica is still on. <laughs> I don't need it, right? Replica is on. I don't need it actually. Let me close it. This is the replica machine. So this is the cool thing in Beam. So no BM text to restore, BM power is powered on, shutting down. Okay, let's see. And uh, where? So this is the VM, right? So now, still is working. So if I look at here, the machine is still down. It's going to be part on in short time.
Kırıbirin orijinal signature hard disk. So actually, I described everything in one video, and this video is more than is going to be more than three hours. But um, it has everything for beam backup, complete beam backup, and replication. So basically, this is for uh, three full days. Each day is eight hours, so total uh, twenty-four. Total of 24 hours plus if effort. So you will get it in three hours video. And I show you each and every steps. And I'm just waiting for this one. Whenever this is complete, then we'll um We'll complete the video because everything is done and everything perfectly working. All right, so everything is done, completed, and so everything running smoothly. So we have a lot of backups jobs running. So we so so far. I shows uh, backup replication, uh, backup copy, and also um, also another thing I shows the file share backup, and also I showed all the backups restore and replication failover fail back. So everything in one video, and if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up, and if you're new in my channel, please subscribe my channel. And also, don't forget to um, click on the bell icon to get my uh, next video because uh, for uh, Beam 1, I'm going to make a separate video because this video is also a long video. But it's a complete course for Beam Backup and Application. Thank you. Thanks for watching.